We've all seen large companies tend to get overly bureaucratic over time. With so many different people interacting with each other, the need for a consistent customer and employee experience becomes vital. And so we see the rise of internal rules, policies, processes and procedures. Initially, they bring about a sense of order, transparency and consistency. However, there comes a point in time when the internal bureaucracy becomes so cumbersome that the organization loses its ability to innovate or respond to the market fast enough. Even while rules and policies get outdated, they are slow to be updated. Eventually, many companies go into extinction because of this inertia. Of the original Fortune 500 list published in 1955, only 12% of companies still exist. So how do you steer a large ship with a million moving parts in today's lightning fast market? The problem here is with scale. As the policies that do wonders for a business at a certain point of time start to become counterproductive, people are slow to react. Steve Kerr, in his Academy Classic article on the folly of rewarding A while hoping for B, provided many such examples over three decades ago. For instance, he points out that whilst most companies hoped that their officers would downsize, delayer, and restructure their organizations as needed in order to remain efficient and nimble, they reward adding staff, adding budgets, and adding hay points. This incentivizes the very opposite behavior. Neville Isdell, former CEO of Coca-Cola, had an interesting way to overcome this issue. He called it freedom within a framework, giving tremendous freedom to the geographic leadership teams to run the business as they saw fit, as long as they remained within a pre-designed framework. The minimum core of the framework was non-negotiable, and every region was required to abide by those guidelines, but everything else was left to the discretion of each team. Another great example is Netflix. Now, Netflix had a two-inch binder describing their travel and entertainment policy, which laid down all kinds of rules of how much to spend, when to travel, in which class, etc., etc. One fine day, they removed that binder and replaced the policy with one sentence. Act in Netflix's best interest. As they did that, TNE expenses came down significantly over the next two to three years because now people took responsibility to do the right thing. That's what freedom within the framework means. Putting this general principle into practice requires the very same leadership energy we talked about in earlier videos. Rules are needed to maintain order and integrity, and at the same time, the rate of change demands flexibility and agility. An extremely effective way to action the principle, therefore, is to lead with values instead of rules. This is crucial for freedom within a framework because by building the framework around unyielding values, you incentivize individuals to hold themselves to their own rules as long as it serves the values. Sounds too good to be true? Here's an example. A company's rule book might say that employees must show up at work punctually at 9 a.m. every day. This rule was put in place to ensure the greatest chance that employees are providing value to the company by guaranteeing a certain number of hours that they must be at work. To enforce this rule, many companies introduced the punch card system, which records arrival and departure times of employees. The same company's values might be including things like think and act like an owner, provide excellent customer service at all times, and strive for excellence to produce the best possible outcomes for the company. For some employees, providing excellent customer service may mean working at odd hours of the night to meet customer needs or attend global conference calls. If someone is living the values diligently and delivering satisfactory results, is the 9 a.m. punctuality rule still so important? This is an easy example because it's so obvious you probably already experienced something like this at your workplace. There's nothing wrong with a manager allowing their people flexibility as long as the bottom line expectation of results is met. Now, to apply this to a more complex business situation, remember that the difference between a boss and a leader is the amount of emphasis on the letter of the law versus the spirit of the law. This requires proactive focus, rewarding and incentivizing behavior that pursues the values of the company. Nothing is more demoralizing than being punished for doing something right. This doesn't mean that you abandon rules altogether. Rules for ethics and safety are crucial and should provide no room for misunderstanding. 
But for the success of value-driven decision-making, the values themselves have to encourage ethical and safe practices. In general, managers and companies will be much better off if they create a culture where the spirit of the law is the most important aspect of employee performance. <laughs>